your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Well, welcome home, family. It's your mom, mom and dad. dad. And we were just attempting to, yeah. Ember's learning, you know, these different theater techniques to get uh, popping before yeah. a show. And we were like, maybe we should try the red. We can't do it. Red. It's like, a, it's like vo vocal, ex like mouth exercises to yeah, get yeah, you yeah. kind of ready. Red leather, yellow leather. Red, red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> red leather. Red leather, yellow, yellow leather. Why do I throw an E on the front red, of it? Red leather, yellow leather. Oh, Whoa. Almost. Red, red leather, yellow leather. Red, red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> red leather, yellow leather. Why do I say yellow leather? I don't think I've gotten it correct one time. No, you did. Yeah, no, red, it was still red leather, off. yellow leather. <laughs> Why do I do yellow leather? Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, red leather, red leather. leather. Holy. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, but it's like leather. Leather. <laughs> red leather, yellow, yellow. Leather. Oh my god. And then there's like the seashore, seashore one. She sells she's she sells seashells by the seashore. She sells seashells by the seashore. Seashells she's <laughs> She sells she sells by the she store. <laughs> you guys try this. I'm telling you, it sounds dumb. It's so hard. She sells seashells by the seashore. She she, she sells, sells seashores by the sea. <laughs> she sells she sells. She sells sea. She sells seashells by the seashore. Oh, Whoa. yes, seashells. See, I, 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 I got one in two. Me. Yeah, two is absurd. No, absolutely not. Ember can just go. She can rip, she it. Can rip it over brain. and over and over and over again. And I'm like, brain. I can't get one out. Anywho, hi family. <sighs> Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our theater exercises. Seashells, seashells by the seashore. I have one thing to say, actually, to sing to you all. Whoa! At the top of this episode. And that is vindicated. I am selfish. I am wrong. I am right. I swear I'm right. I Whoa. swear I knew it all Whoa. along. Wait, who is that? Uh, Dashboard Confessional. Whoa. And that is my song about yeah, Sam M. You were right. Give okay. your flowers, give your roses to Jess because she was right. She I smelled it. it. I swear I knew it all along. <laughs> Are you looking at an emo phase right now? What's happening? Yes. Um, also, I feel like it's so annoying because I keep <laughs> every episode being like, trust me, I know yes. Sam M is going to be the villain. I swear. Trust me. None mm -hmm. of you all believe me. No one's not believing me. There's not been one, well, but there's been no kickback about like, oh, I see what you're saying. Like, you're, like him, you're, you're like you're standing. Wrong, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like doing this whole annoying, like everybody I'm right. Like I everyone agrees with you. Everyone's against me. No one believes me, but I think everyone's been yeah. on the same page. It's like That's one of those like, like very I, obvious. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. So like, you guys, McDonald's <laughs> tastes good. Tell me I'm crazy. It's like, no, everyone's like, yeah, we agree. Like, I do feel like that is a hot take for some people. Oh, is it? Well, I mean, listen, I'm not saying it's good for you. I'm saying it tastes good. I still think it's a hot take for some people. Really? Some people really don't like it. Okay, well, whatever. Sam M. What I will say, though, you were the first to see. You were quick to say it. And you saw it when you saw his face. I think that's the difference. But I feel like everyone's kind of been on the same page. Okay. But the, it just was one of those moments where I just feel like very proud of myself. Because yeah. I do think often off the cast bios, I'm pretty wrong. Mm. Um, I, but every but I hit gold every once in a while. And that, Sam M. I felt really passionate about from the cast bios. And I was like, I know she's going to be super into him. But what I was wrong about is I said that I think America was going to be obsessed with him. And mm. I was was going to be i Got kind it. of made it this like martyr thing where i'm yeah. like everyone's gonna be obsessed with him he's gonna go all the way everyone's gonna adore him and at the end i'm gonna be bummed out because i never liked him or trusted him from the beginning and then something's gonna come out well i don't think that's actually what's happening I think you really no wanted one. it to be a moment and it just wasn't a moment i think everyone just kind of was on the same Everybody's page like, yeah, and like, yeah, yes, sam, sam M seems, M seems like sketchy. a player sketchy villain energy guy mm -hmm. and so we saw it though big time this episode we saw it big time and personally, we'll get into it, but I think that there's one main thing that I'm seeing which proves your point to the max. And we'll talk about it. Oh. But there's one like, on a it's a specific characteristic. Character in what he's doing with her oh. that shows me, you know, everything. You mean Mr. Kiss 5000? 
Mr. Kissy Mr. 5000. Mr. Seductor. Mr. Note. Yeah. Chef Fluster. Oh, because he's like, you know, because you know, you, you said that I fluster you. So that was Chef like a hint to you. Fluster. Doesn't even make sense. It's, there's not like a stripper energy about it. Don't stripper names kind of have to have like an innuendo to them typically you know what i mean i mean like, in this situation yes like generally you know what i yes. mean it's like buck naked right and it's like my name's buck and my last name's naked sure, i'm a stripper sure, 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 sure. but chef, chef fluster. fluster sounds like a chef that is actually there like a, like a real person i swear he's gonna like keep... jeff fluster you're like that's not a thing like <laughs> gonna... that's like that's just a word you know what i mean like he's gonna keep using that trust and believe chef fluster will get used in next relationship and next like you have to next go like dating, next chef dating. buns or like you know what i mean I'm, I'm trying to think of like something right. that's kind of okay it's food related but it's also like your butt okay there's a fluster is like what yeah like chef um, fluster yeah like maybe chef, flex fluster f sh chef eggplant I mean, yes. Aubergine. Is that what they're called? Aubergine. 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 An eggplant, the fancy name. Really? Aubergine, I think, maybe. But you know what I mean? It's not even like a, it's not even, yeah. So confident, too. But any, but let me, let me just say this. But anyone anytime, who's that yeah. confident, they're not confident. It's, it's like you're projecting fake confidence. Like, um, incredible it's like no one says that unless they're absolutely full of shit he he became chef luster dr mckissey mr no speaking no conversation yes. only dr mckissey mm -hmm. mr i use my fists and you use your words mr i'll break you in half mr you know ankle biter i mean he had a lot this episode and he also just really immature wanted to fight he was just talking about wanting to break Devin in half, using his fists. It was very know. schoolyard. It was like, oh. this guy is making fun. Like, it's like, it's this feeling of like, I don't know how to combat these situations with my words. No. So now I'm just like fighting you in the schoolyard. And that's very like, but then at the same time, have this fake, like, I'm not going to let him get to me. I am, I'm impenetrable. What is it? Mutual respect. Yeah, but then in the ITM's <laughs> freaking out, you know, it's like, which really is why childish. I feel vindicated. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm wrong. I'm right. I swear I'm right. I swear I knew it all along. Emo. Thank you. But should we just get right into this? Yes, please. I think there was, there was a lot of drama. Mm -hmm. Everyone, this season is packed. Yeah. I don't think we've ever seen men genuinely hate each other so much i can't remember a time i can't remember a time when we've seen men hate each other so much because often you're kind of like okay we've got a lot of guys yeah th there's gonna be drama that's introduced yes. by producers and then as soon as they're off the show you see them all hanging out and you're kind of like okay yep. we see this season I don't feel like we're going to see Devin and Sam M ever hanging out. Like, I do not. I think genuinely there is a hatred <laughs> well, you know, seeping into Australia with these men. Just to look at, like, just for them to look at each other and go, I'll never be your friend. I'll never respect you. I'll never like you. Fuck off. Okay. Shake on it. And that's, that's not like, let's, let's work this out. Exactly. Let's get to a place where we're cool with each other. It's like, no, 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 no. I hate you. It's and like, after nothing too. It's so like... You guys hate each other after two weeks and the only thing that's happened is that like you guys are both going for the same girl and that you don't like the way he talks. It's like it's crazy. There hasn't been one like outlandish like <laughs> we haven't had an actual villain on the show like in regards to we generally have one of the guys that will look at everyone and be like you guys have no chance. No. You know what I mean? Like really eg like egregious. Yes. You know insulting things that Nothing. generally there'll be one crazy guy. There has not been one actual crazy guy and Sam M is acting. Like we got a guy in there going. I know. Well, and then Aaron too with the book and everything. Can't remember his name. And he's just like bad character. What it really sounds like is we got some really insecure guys. Yes. And because of that, there's a lot of like reaction to anything that doesn't fit exactly how they want it. But which you, is like so But bizarre. you know this drama is real because of the moment at the very end of the episode. I think one of my favorite moments is where Spencer, low-key Spencer, happy-go-lucky golden retriever Spencer, yes. all of a sudden just goes... <laughs> What is the purpose of this? He's he like, literally 
his uh, boom, his voice boomed at the yeah. end. What is the purpose of this? He's like, you know, he's losing his mind because he's yeah. like, because you, there, it's chaos. Yeah. So the chaos, I believe, is real because I think the men 100%. genuinely they hate each other. Well, and everyone else wild. is getting pissed because it's just like you guys are wasting our time. It's the classic thing. It's like you guys are making this all about your little back and forth. You, you know, what there's other people here, right? Like, there is a level though of like what Sam Sam M's looking at it like it's me versus Devin for her heart. And everyone's like, you know, we're still here, right? Yeah, you remember? Like, there's us? other people here. But my Sam favorite thing M about doesn't even remember Thomas N. Yeah, it's like that's his like right hand man. He's he like, doesn't Thomas, even remember. Thomas, go get me a coffee. He's like, he doesn't even remember him. He's like, it's just me and Devin. And Thomas is like, uh, you know, giving me like massive assistant vibes. At one point, Thomas tried to say something, and he literally like shooed him yeah. away. He's like, coffee. It was crazy. <laughs> anyway, vodka on the rocks. Now, anyway, let's like dive in from yeah. the top. But first, we're going to take a quick pause. Um, family, I have let you all know that suddenly in recent years, I have gotten stinkier. OK, the body odor has said, hey, hello, honey, it's me. So obviously, if I would go on The Bachelor or Bachelorette, first thing I'd be packing is some Dio. OK, but especially if I was on this state shaking it up there, legs up, you know, I'd need that whole body deodorant. And the only whole body deodorant I'm using is Lumi because it works so well and for so long and it works everywhere. Lumi's pH optimized formula is clinically proven to block odor all day. And it's not just for underarms. It's for everywhere we get odor, pits, privates, feet, under boobs, you name it. I hit those thighs too. Like I said, I get it everywhere. And hey, we've got a special offer for you all. New customers get 15% off all Lumi products with code MOMDAD at LumiDeodorant.com. Yeah, Lumi's whole body deodorant was created by an OBGYN who saw firsthand how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. It's clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor up to 72 hours. It's baking soda free, paraben free, and pH balanced for safe use below the belt. And you can choose from a variety of fresh, bright scents like clean tangerine, lavender sage, or the toasted coconut. I have been in my toasted coconut Love era toasted these coconut. days. I'm loving it. It makes me smell like summer. Yes. No longer stinky. I'm smelling like summer. Yes. I love fresh it summer. so much. Okay. Thank you so much, Alumi. After many requests, family, listen up. After many requests, they've formulated a new product to keep you smelling fresh and help you stay drier. Lumi Whole Body Deodorant Plus Sweat Control, the same 72-hour odor control, now with 72-hour sweat control. It's now available in the cream tube. Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, which is my fave, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. And as a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Such a good deal. Use code MOMDAD for 15% off your first purchase at LumiDeodorant.com. That's code MOMDAD at L U M E. D E O D O R A N T dot com. That's code mom dad at lumi deodorant dot com. I'm telling you, fam, it works all over fabulously. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have it everywhere on me right now. It's been a stinky summer for me. <laughs> not anymore. Truly, not anymore. Not but anymore. it was a stinky summer. And when I apply, it is no longer stinky. Um, okay. Let's just get in from Let's the top. Go. And the first thing that I'd like to acknowledge from the top is the warning that we got yes. before the episode began. Okay. Yes. The warning, I'd like to read this. This was at the beginning of the episode. It was also posted all over The Bachelor, Bachelorette social mm -hmm. media. It said, tonight's episode of The Bachelorette contains images of a graphic nature, including scantily clad men thrusting and gyrating mm. if you have a weak heart or raging libido viewer discretion is advised <laughs> no this was unprecedented yes and i also would like to make a side note that i hate the word gyrating like mm. you know how a lot of people hate the word moist i hate uh, the word yes. gyrating I hate gyrating. it so much. I'm well, like, it's only please. used in weird contexts. It's you know just what I mean? like you never like, oh my gosh, babe, the sex last night was so nice. You gyrated so hot. Oh you know what I mean? Like this, it, people only use it in like weird contexts where you're talking about that kind of shit. I just picture it like kind of like a like a like shake. vibrating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh Gy yeah. You know, what is just... gyrating versus vibrating? 
Mm. Someone look it up and let us know. Hit the comments. Um, Yeah, a weak heart or a, was it was like a weak heart or, or raging libido? And if you have both, like don't watch. Basically. Do not, absolutely do not watch. It's what if you have a warning. weak heart and a mid thirties libido? Mm, good point. That might be the secret sauce. My favorite thing about I can handle this. It. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it, no problem. What does that say about me? <laughs> a weak heart and a mediocre libido. <laughs> it's true and i'm the same thing well, we're sitting I, there have, going, oh, I, no like, I have a heart condition i, I have a weak problem. heart and i have a mid 30s yeah, libido the heck? i guess maybe because we don't have raging libidos the combination mm. we did, it didn't yeah. hit us because i watched we're the, we're the perfect. it and i was doing a lot of blinking like, now i was feeling quite flustered chef flustered during mm-hmm. the moaning portions where they would show like step one shirt removal and you'd hear the audio in the background go oh oh yeah right I'm right so right they like they like they like added in like porn sounds and post i'm like what new audio intern is yeah. out here just boop just like inserting just graphic mm-hmm. sounds into an abc show we've it's... never we've never seen or heard such a thing now i will tell you something that absolutely tickled me mm-hmm. about this intro was the idea of jesse palmer in the audio booth recording yes. this intro yes i just can imagine they're like can I, you try that again can you try it can you say gyrating one more time and i'm Hit like the g a little harder you say gyrating yeah i feel like all this shows is that we need jesse palmer you know maybe doing some dipsy type audio erotica yeah because i feel like he leaned into it he was mm-hmm. giving us some dramatic pauses he was living for this moment i feel like jesse palmer some audio erotica the people would love it also, I kind of feel like Jesse could have done this and been by far the best. He would have kind of would have loved to have seen. Yeah, that. he would have. But you know who it. I would have loved to see this is Nick. <laughs> Nick from, uh, you know, Perfect Match. The host, Nick. Oh my God! How could I? <laughs> he would have been laughing so hard. He would have loved it. Like these are the moments where see, you need someone who's just having a blast. I see. I feel like Nick would have taken it very seriously. I don't think. I feel like Jesse Palmer Nick would, would have been, been like, coaching them. Yeah, Jesse Palmer would have been like step aside, boys, yeah, and yeah, done true. like just absolutely just you know wow wow yeah. the world. I feel like Nick a hundred percent would have been like I need. Uh, an acoustic accompaniment. I need yes. my 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 guitar up on stage, my player, my acoustic accompaniment, and I will do a more slow yes. strip tease. This actually, maybe he would have done a ninety eight degree song. That would Ooh. have been fire, fire. Would, yeah, maybe. Anywho, Jesse Palmer, just a thought. Audio audio erotica. Let's That's another tongue in twister. <laughs> um, but we are still in Australia, mm-hmm. and right out the gate, we get a one on one date. Yes, and not just a one on one date. We get a one on one with Spencer, which yes. feels a little random Mm -hmm. which excited me yes i agree it kind of felt like she was going you know what i haven't given you a shot there might be something here that's what it felt it almost felt like i'm gonna get rid of you tonight or give you a rose you know what that might have been what it it felt like i haven't decided you know you're tall and handsome but like i don't really know who you are yeah let's go for it right away let's decide if you're if you're gonna be here now right away we hear jen say that spencer has golden retriever energy and i felt very passionately about this because i I feel like the term golden retriever energy started as what it was meant to be and now has been desecrated by a bunch of fuck boys who are just trying to say that they're like playful and fun and like kind of stupid and they just kind of like to have a good time. I'm like, that's not golden retriever energy. Jen nailed it because Spencer has true golden retriever energy. He is pure as a golden retriever. All he wants to do is please. He always forgets your flaws. He comes back to you time and time again. Super chivalrous. He's opening doors. He's helping with seatbelts. Yeah, he was belting her. He was seat belting her in, which would have been a little much for me. I would have been like, I got it. Yeah, he feeds her. He feeds her. He brushes her teeth. (laughs) He brushes her hair. A hundred strokes yeah. a night. Pedicures. <laughs> he works for Jen now. He's his, he's Jen's person. He's helping her decide who to date. It's like, wait a second, we went too far. <laughs> he's he's making like a like a like a pros and cons list of every guy for her. He's kind of like, wait, I just did it again. My friend zone myself. Spencer is true golden retriever energy. Yeah. And I get I get passionate about it because I do feel like the fuckboy community has really desecrated sure. that. And they're sure. just like, oh, well, I'm a it's golden a retriever. It's, it's like, a you are not a golden retriever. You're just a, an asshole that likes to party and not take accountability. And so mm-hmm. you're like, I'm kind of just like uh, it's not who me. thinking who I'm me who me. No, yes. Spencer is true golden retriever. Mm-hmm. If anything comes out about Spencer, T 
negative anything, I will be shocked. Yeah. And I will officially retire as a podcaster because I'll be like, I clearly do not know how to mm-hmm. read people mm-hmm. because I have never seen someone so pure. Yeah. Like the last thing you'd, you'd hear about is that he was in between 19 women before he got on the show. Yeah. Can you imagine if that came out? I literally, I put, I be like, put he's my the biggest hat up. Con in the world. I'd be like, I'm out. I, I don't, I don't understand people because he, I feel like I can read through and through and yeah. I don't feel like that's hard to do. Yeah. But she's like, I feel like she's, she, this is a classic scenario with her. So like we go up in the, the helicopter, which is like they have an obsession with the heights with her. They want to terrify her. They want to. We even see next week there's like a bungee jumping thing or something. I'm like, they want this to woman terrify says she's her. She's scared of heights and spiders and all you've done it's on just, dates. It's all it what is about is a that. pretty woman date? What about a date where she gets no. to get all glam and, mm-hmm. you know, go to next, high tea or next something? Next wingsuit, you know what I mean? <laughs> off of Everest. But like what's interesting is like they they have chemistry. They do. They have chemistry. That final kiss was like, oh, got got really good. But one thing I will say is that Jen to me is really like Spencer's the type of guy that makes her, in my opinion, I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but if it does happen, like make her question herself because there's this level of like, how could I be so into Sam M and Spencer at the same time? Mm. Like they're so diametrically opposed that it's like, it's almost like, demon and angel on the shoulder going go with this guy go with this guy go with this guy and it's like i can literally two picture spencer in like an angel robe. exactly they're two extremes that's why i feel like she'll have to go with someone in the middle yeah because it'll make her go like i like spencer a lot he's husband material he's committed he's amazing he's all the things but maybe i'm missing a little bit of that fire flame sam's all fire flame i don't have any husband material here so it's gonna interest it'll be interesting to see what that does to her brain yeah i think spencer when i was watching it i was like man spencer is the guy he's the he seems like a wonderful person he's the guy that it's like everyone should be dating a Spencer. Like everyone deserves a Spencer, but it is that typical, and I I hate this, but it's the typical sometimes the nice guys get left in the Mm -hmm. wake. And I I hate that. And I hope that that's not the case with Spencer. Um, But it's feeling that way. It's feeling that way. It's feeling like she's, she really likes him, but at the same time, I don't see how she can like those two guys at the same time, which means there's something missing. See, I feel like you can definitely like, like, I feel like I no, like you, no, no, you, sorry. all you different types of guys. You absolutely can like both of them. Yeah. But I think it shows the both sides of the brain. Yeah. Going, sure. I'm at war with myself. What do I want? Or can I get something in the middle? Right. Well, Spencer, so they had the helicopter mm-hmm, date mm-hmm. and then they have the evening portion mm-hmm. where Spencer is like, hey, I have to talk to you. Yep. Um, I was engaged before. Yeah, yeah. And we, and by the way, he made a comment where he said, we're two months before the wedding. We had picked out the wedding venue. And I right away thought, oh my God, Spencer is that amazing man. He did it all. Who did. He did it all. Everything. 100%. He no, was bouquets. Mo, no question. Arrangements. He's the one doing all the cake testing. He's finding the wedding venue. He's finding the calligrapher to do. Like he, he wants to get married. This man loves hard. You can just feel it. And you know that he planned every moment of that wedding. Meanwhile, his fiance is in Mykonos he said, or wherever she he was. He said, my fiance took a trip. A girl's trip. And came back. And started packing up. And I'm like, well, Evan, there's never been, hey, just FYI, family, that not, that, happens, not that you wouldn't know this, but if your partner ever goes on a trip, comes back and is like, I don't know if I can do this and starts packing up, they cheat it. Oh, yeah. Whether it be emotionally or physically. She hooked up with Pierre in France. A thousand percent. And maybe she's moved to France at this point because she ends up going back, he says, with the family. And he's like confused what's going on. And then he ends up finding evidence of cheating and not just cheating. It sounds like multiple incidences of cheating. And my heart was breaking apart for Spencer because again, Spencer is the guy who he is so pure. It's like Winnie the Pooh, golden retriever want this man screams that he truly wants to be like a father Mm -hmm. and a husband. And he'd be such, and he will be such Mm -hmm. an amazing one. Mm -hmm. And that this happened to him. It was just absolutely devastating. But I felt like Jen's follow-up question was so good. She didn't just go, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. She right away was like, I'm so sorry. Question for you though. How do you feel now? Mm -hmm. Are you going to have like trust issues moving forward? Because like, how could you not through that? And she was asking like, I don't know. I felt like she was asking great questions. I feel like I'm caught in a moment like that. Cameras are in my face. I'm just going, oh, I'm so sorry. Comfort, comfort. Not like actually, 
which is a more loving thing to do is to look at somebody and be like, let's talk about it. Yes. Like, how do you feel? Where yes. are you at now? Do you feel ready? Do you yeah. feel like you're going to have, you know, yeah. hesitations moving forward? And and he said, I think it was four years ago. And he's like, oh, no, no, baby girl, I am ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like, I'd like, love to pick up where I left off, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's interesting. We'll see. But they did. At first, I was like their first few kisses in like the second episode. I was like, no, it doesn't feel right. like it's really lingering. It feels like a quick smoochie. But then... They had the firework display and they were making out big time. And it seemed pretty fire. Yes. Like Spencer Nice Guy looks like he's a Spencer Good Kisser. Yes. As well. I completely agree. And I think that probably an amazing lover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, when they're kind, when someone's sure. kind. You want to give them love. You want to give them love. God, you know, probably unreal libido. Um, but one thing I will say. Is that like they have all the chemistry? Yeah. And um, he's so kind, so sweet. So this, it's just going to be interesting because I, I think there's the sexual chemistry thing too. You know, when we see the Sam M thing, that's like, you know, c captivating her a little bit. But one thing I will say is what we haven't quite figured out is how important the laughing playful conversation yeah. how important that is I mean, she says it's number one so that's that's kind of where i'm seeing a little bit of like spencer is the total package but he's not the guy at the party that's making people laugh he's not the guy he's the he's the like you know amazing man who will give you a great life and take care of your kids and be yeah. there and it, you just, you'll never worry about him like he's amazing never. but he is he gonna make you laugh is he gonna keep you on your toes is he bringing spice of life i don't know i don't think he's that guy so it'll be interesting to see when this all wraps like where she where she kind of right. lands like her priorities well there's a couple like more front runner guys who aren't funny right so yeah. it's spencer i guess now yeah. uh sam m um, marcus marcus these are not comical these aren't I, like you know yeah. stand-up comedians versus a devon yeah. and a jonathan they're funny guys yes, dylan when we saw him on that stage mm -hmm. he's funny yes so those are it'll be interesting to see once we start to narrow out the men who's remaining yes versus like okay how many of the funny guys are there yes versus maybe the guys that there's more like a sam emma sexual attraction to or a husband Spencer, or a husband, husband material. material so it's interesting yeah. there is there, everyone's represented all the personalities are represented well i will say you know spencer did surprise me at the end yes. when he was like is there no purpose in this and he kind of started to wrangle the men he yes. kind of became a shepherd to all of these sheep he and was like them. he he a hundred percent and he man he looks like a pastor and he, he acts, like, acts like a pastor too <laughs> and he pastored those men and he's like men let's sit around in a community men's group circle let's pray and talk about why you all are so fucking annoying and it's Have not you about guys you guys been watching porn let's talk about it is all this coming <laughs> which is from every porn? single church thing if you're a guy have you been watching porn how much porn are you watching let's talk about it and then i'll kind of hold it against you for the rest of your life but low-key whatever that's that's just maybe that's separate from the point i'd be interested to see spencer on the thunder down under date I feel like he would have surprised us. That's true. Um, anywho. Yes. Speaking of, let's get into this Thunder Down yes. Under date. Uh, Fantastic. But we got to take another quick mm -hmm. pause first. Family. Um, well, I told y'all last week that I was on my period and I just wrapped it. Hooray. Um, but here's the thing. When I'm on my period, the period care products I use are always from Cora. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be able to partner with Cora because I have been using Cora's tampons, pads, and liners for the last like two years, and I love them. They are comfortable. They are super effective, which is a huge thing for me. And here's the deal. They are made with clean ingredients that you can feel good about. Listen, you know we can all be very aware of ingredients that are going in our food or our skincare, our beauty products, but hey, the same goes with period care products. That's why I love Cora so much. And you can actually find Cora wherever you shop, Target, Walmart, Amazon, or online at Cora.life. So like I said, I've been using Cora's products for a few years now, and now it's all that I'll use. Cora's products stand out from the rest. Their tampons are made from 100% organic cotton. They're actually the number one selling 100% organic cotton tampon. And all their pads and liners are made with a breathable organic cotton top sheet. And here's the thing. 
Whatever you choose, Cora's got you covered from full flow to barely there days. Personally, the first few days for me are a heavy flow. And thank you, Cora. They've always got me covered, even during the flooding situations. Okay, there's no surprise leaks. And then as well, on my last days when it's the barely there, they have the perfect absorbencies and sizes and they're always comfortable. And by the way, they also offer a wide range of period care products that include reusable discs and cups, period under wear and products that help soothe and ease period cramps. They really do have it all. Plus, with every purchase, Cora provides period products and body education to people who might otherwise go without. They've donated over 24 million period products to date. I know you'll love Cora as much as I do, so I've worked with them on a special deal just for our listeners. You'll get 20% off, but only when you visit our exclusive URL. That's Cora.life. Cora.life slash mom dad and use our promo code mom dad. Such a good discount. That's C O R A dot life slash mom dad. Don't wait. Get 20% off with promo code mom dad at Cora.life slash mom dad. Okay, on to the first group date, uh, which, by the way, right before the first group date, during Spencer's date, we did have a a brief interruption with Sam M and Thomas N. Mm -hmm. And this was when they were grinding, probably post-workout, having a couple drinks, grinding about Devin. They won't stop talking about him. They're talking about how he's an ankle biter. Why is he here? And that's then when Sam M makes the comment where he said he might be smooth with with his words, but Sam M is smooth with his fists. Like, what does that mean? Like you're gonna punch I'm him like for like fight Devin for like, disagreeing what? with him? Like I, it's it's so. And then he even later on said like, if this was in the street, it wouldn't happen the same way. It's like, so so because because he talks to her, you want to fight him? Like, he dude, keeps, be more basic. He keeps talking about resorting to physical violence about Devin, and again, like you mentioned, nothing happened. It's like, what are you so mad about that you're threatening with violence? It's like, yeah, well, I could kick his ass. So embarrassing. So embarrassing. And again, that's that's the the deep insecurity where you're like, okay, Sam M isn't used to competing for a woman's attention. And so now all of a sudden, Devin is getting more of Jen's attention. And Sam M is like, the only thing I can do is result to wanting to kick his ass Mm -hmm, in the street. mm -hmm, Wild. Well, they deliver to these men a thunder down under type of date. We see a few of the men from Thunder Down Under mm-hmm. from the the Vegas show yes. come out on a theater, theater stage and do some moves. Now, okay, so just first, I just want to say right off the top, a stripping date, mm-hmm. it always just kind of blows my mind in these situations because of course you go right away, like everyone's talking right away to the roles reversed. Like yes. if this were women, if this were mm-hmm. The Bachelor, like then why is it okay with the men? And then of course you ha- we have numerous men and we'll talk about Sam N yes. and how he felt uncomfortable mm-hmm. in this date situation. And I just have to say, why are we not... Why are we not having some sort of sign up sheet beforehand where it's like, hey, everybody, who's comfortable doing a date where you are stripping publicly on stage? Yes. Because truth of the matter, you know, if the people are down, it's fun to watch. If the people are living for it and they're enjoying mm-hmm. performing and doing the strip teases, it's great to watch. But I'll be honest, if I was on the show, I would not be comfortable doing right. this. Right, right. I love, I love, you know, I love going to a, to a strip tease type situation, but me being on stage, it's not for me. I'm not comfortable with that. So my heart always is with the people who are put in the situation where they're like, I'm not comfortable doing this. Yes. I mean, I agree. But what about this show is about like making sure everyone's (laughs) comfortable. I mean, that is not what we're watching here. True. (laughs) But one thing I will say about these things and I do feel like I do feel for Sam M and guys like that, but I will say it's like Sam N. Sorry, Sam we N. We can never, we cannot. Yes, miss. of course. We, we we got bad Sam and Sam N. <laughs> but I do feel like no one, no one makes you do anything, and you can always come at it creatively different. He did catastrophic failure, but the spirit was right. The idea that goes, I'm not going to do the stripping thing. I'm going to try this other thing. Like 
you could totally go up on there, go up there and go, I'm not going to do stripping, but I'm going to do a little stand up comedy for you and just do it. Like you, right. you don't have to do anything. You can just go up and do whatever you want. So my thing is like to always remember, like, yeah, they're putting them in an awkward position, but like no one says you have to follow the rules. Like you yeah. can always just divert and do whatever you want. And so when you're in the position, like, yeah, but the pressure is there. And then you're sure. also feeling like I could get cut. The producers could cut me if I'm not sure. cooperating, which is why I'm saying a nice little cute sign up sheet, you know, outside, Hence the of talent their, show. outside of their hotel room to be like, hey, guys, like who's comfortable ripping their clothes off and on public television and in front of uh, hundreds of people in an audience? Yes. You know, for a fact, there'd be a good amount of people people who'd be down to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like we saw that in this episode where we're like, it seemed like there were a few guys who were down and stoked to do it. And it's like, yes. okay, well maybe that then is the one that becomes the four person date, not yeah. the car, not the formula one date. It's like maybe the stripping date right. becomes the four person date because you got a couple, a handful of the men who are like, yeah, this sounds great. Right. Cool, 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 cool. But to add insult to injury, he breaks his finger oh. on the warm up. Breaking your finger <laughs> on the warm up <laughs> is like, trying to be funny and then hurting yourself. You know oh, what I mean? Like I imagine there's five or six people and you're trying to do a funny bit and then you trip and fall and break your tooth and then oh, you have to go to the no. hospital. Like there's nothing worse than like trying to be sexy and then hurting yourself. Oh no. And then he was already just stressed about it. And this is where I have to like, I do have to give Sam N a shout out because I feel like there have been situations in the past, like for instance, the Yosef of it all, where then He's going about it by shaming everybody, yes. shaming the lead, shaming people who are comfortable with it. And it's like, no, no, we can celebrate the people who enjoy it and are comfortable with it um, and not feel comfortable with it ourselves. Sam N, at least from what we see, he wasn't shaming anybody. Mm -hmm. He wasn't making Jen feel bad about it. He wasn't making the other guys feel bad about it. He just wasn't comfortable doing it. Correct. And then he breaks his earth strip, <laughs> sprains his thumb. <laughs> and I thought that was going to be his out. Yes. I thought he was going to be like, can't go out there, everybody. I've got this injury and have them take him away in some sort of ambulance like vehicle, some paramedic like vehicle. But he he did do it. And like you said, um, catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure. I mean, he went in for it. It was the equivalent of when you're just about to be broken up with and then you tell them you love them. And they're like, <sighs> I just don't think this is where I love you. Oh, and you're gosh. like, what? And now I, Oh, like it was such a panic move I know. to the point where then he had to apologize later to everyone being like, I'm sorry. Well, I you didn't messed have to, up. He did, but I'm saying he did. Yeah. And it was brutal because it's like, I, that was like the ultimate, in my opinion, like nail in the coffin because now she's going to go, you're not mature enough to know what, love is obviously we're not in love yet you barely like and it's one thing too if Devin or sam m said that because they've spent the most time like connecting yeah. with her sam n has barely spoken with her it was but when he it came was out screaming <laughs> i actually don't know what love is and i'm just kind of throwing the idea out there and thinking i'm just gonna she'll test bite. it i'm just gonna why test not it i've out. never been in love so maybe this is love you no, know it was when he came out it was the record literally literally stopped yeah he said cut the music yeah and again it bums me out because I felt like this could have been a really awesome moment mm -hmm. when you're not comfortable mm -hmm. with the situation. It would have been like, you know what? I'm going to do something funny. I'm going to sing a little song because he said, I'm going to bear my soul instead. Mm -hmm. Or he could have removed the robe and been in full clothing and done like some sort of theatrical <sighs> contemporary yeah. dance. Just tried to make her laugh mm -hmm. or even be sincere, even though that still would have been a little cringe yeah. in the midst of all of this silliness. But the he, fact I, that I was he hoping he would do out, like a like bandaged his arm like in a sling and then like hobbled on stage and then like dropped it, fell, did a somersault and like, did you know, did almost like I'm injured. No, I'm not type kind of, of thing. Kind of a Willy Wonka exactly. type of. Exactly. <laughs> I thought he would do something like that. But no, he went full brutal cringe and it was... It was all time when it, like everyone's covering their mouth and stuff. It was brutal. I know. I felt for him. It was like, bro, you made it so much worse. And I think they've maybe talked for like three minutes. It's like I'm already falling. He says I'm already falling in love. Like with it would have been so much better if he just would have came out and did like a bad dance and then walked off and been like, okay, he's middle of the pack. He's not good. Whatever. But That's like I'm saying, he could have kept everything kind of a, on, like a nonchalant thing. Yeah, and done was, kind of a Fred Astaire yes, moment, like the little tap dancing. But it 
apparently enraged Sam M. Which yeah. again, it's like he's dude, so mad about what everything. What is wrong with you? This guy can't say he's falling in love. This guy can't talk to her. This guy can't do he this. He says it's disrespectful that Sam N. said that he was already falling in love with her. And I'm like, you know what? Let's not kick someone while they're down. Yes. This man is clearly embarrassed. The entire audience gasped, and not in a love gasp, in a like horror gasp. Mm -hmm. And you're going to continue to kick this man while he's down, giggle about him, say that he's being disrespectful when he's clearly uncomfortable. And I just Jen hate didn't when guys it. do that thing where it's like everyone has to abide by my rule that I created. Yeah, it's, it's just like he's created Sam some rule M. that's like I'm. A, I can do whatever I want. No one else can. The it's Aaron like, and the Sam M rule book is strong, and they so abide bad. by it, and it is so bad. Um, but we'll get into the specifics of what went down yeah. then with Sam N afterwards. But other than that, overall, I mean, everyone was literally oiled up. Jesse yeah. Palmer, we were finding out who's going to be like Mr. Down Under, Mr. Yes. Bachelorette Down Under. Mm -hmm. He's got some funny... Dylan came out and he called him the CE make you O. Loved it. Very good. Very that was good. very funny writing. Very good. Dylan... I he thought great. was great. Amazing. He was funny. He was relaxed, and especially beforehand. He had m been making comments where he's like, oh, yeah, I've 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 watched some guys strip before and I'm going to get my practice. It on was a great. It was it was kind of everything you want. It's like yeah. a little sexy, a little fun, a little silly versus like Sam M who literally just tried to be sexy. Oh and so God. that was really embarrassing. So I felt like that was really good. Like he was playful, funny. There was some sexy moments, but it Marcus was also like came out and Marcus. He he went hard. He, he went full, full like professional hard. He really loves astronauting. Yes, because he was humping that astronaut helmet yes. like no tomorrow. Even the guys were like, "This guy's really good at this." He seemed like a professional. Yeah. He took it very seriously. Mm -hmm. It was a job for him to do, and he he did the job. Agreed entirely. He killed it. Um, Jonathan. Yeah, I mean. He was the best, in my opinion. Like you, but but it, but in the way, like he had a big smile on his face, so it, like it like made it very fun. But at the same time, like he just was actually very good. Yeah, he <laughs> like it was it. actually like really good. Well, he was like really practicing backstage. Yeah, he was like doing somersaults he and like popping up. He wrote Jen on whatever boxer brief shorts he was wearing, yes. the booty shorts. That was funny. I thought he was nice and relaxed. But then, yes, Sam M comes out, and Sam M yeah. has done this in front of the mirror too many times. Oh, yeah, Sam. Well, because Sam M took this seriously. Like, I'm actually a, like, if me and Jen don't work out, I will move to Australia and work with these guys. I'm going to join this. He's definitely watched Magic Mike a lot and been like, they don't even know I what the fuck that. they're doing. It's not hard. He's probably said numerous times on dates that Magic Mike is his favorite movie because he can do it better. 100%. And then he's waiting for the woman to say like, well, show me how. Exactly. And then he does a full lap He's dance. living a romantic novel in his head. Yes. That's just about him. It's just called Sam M. It has yes. nothing to do with the woman. He doesn't give a shit about the woman. It's just about a, just all adoration of how hot and perfect and gorgeous. Yeah. He when he's is. having sex in the mirror, he's not looking at his partner. He's just looking at him being like, thank God I exist. Thank God. God, this gift to humanity, which is me, is a thing. He came out of Chef Luster, spatula in the mouth, mm -hmm. and the way he walked up, and he just, how he, oh God, I'm sorry, everybody, but he just, I just. It's so cringe to take yourself that seriously. I it just really do not is. like this man, okay? And he just comes up, and he's just like, uh, 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 hey, girl. It's always like, uh, 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 it's always the hey hand girl. rubbing. <laughs> hey, girl, and just nuzzle, nuzzle, and walks up, and gets up in her grill and is just like, this isn't going to be PG. I'm it's like, like, what? What are you going to do? You take your pants completely off? Because that's what everyone else <laughs> is doing what you're doing. Nothing about what you did is special. You walked up, you kind of grinded it on her, you did a little thing and then you left. Like, <laughs> that's the thing about it. Nothing <laughs> about what you did was special. Not one move was interesting, more different. Like it was the same shit. That's the thing that really made me laugh about it is I was like, he really thought he did something. He, he was like, oh, 100%. these guys are nothing. But I feel like that's been kind of consistent with the challenges, even with like the Australian photo shoot. He was like, clearly I got that. It's, and it was like, a, what made you think that you crushed this more than anybody else? He comes up, he does a mediocre... It was just like a fine strip tease. And it's like, Damn. what was wild was that Jen like kind of fell for it. She was kind of like, oh yeah, that is hot. Well, and to the point where the other, the other women there, the two bachelorettes, the, two, the Aussie bachelorettes, the Aussie bachelorettes were like, Hey, just as a heads up, like we don't like that guy. Like it was hilarious. They immediately sensed like, we know you guys have sexual chemistry, but just know that guy. And then even the one girl was like, I picked that guy. Don't pick that I guy. I lived for the Aussie bachelorette. So they were judging with Jen mm -hmm. and them immediately being like, um, Sam M, 
Just FYI, we can really sense the sexual chemistry. I would really stay away Don't from Don't go him. near that guy. He is I not, loved uh-huh. that. I thought that, that was so great that they said that. And I do think that it made Jen pause because even with her, which we'll talk about, her one-on-one moment in the night portion with Sam and the next evening, we did her, hear her saying in ITMs like, I am falling for him. I am falling for him. But I feel like she's getting hesitant. And she's mm. saying like, is there, it's almost like in some of the ITMs or the way that she's communicating with him, there's always that almost precursor question like, is this just about to be kissing? Yes. Are you not worried, Sam? Uh, there's there's a question and she's ruminating and I think she knows this is not her guy, yes. but it's like, I'm attracted to him. I can't help it. Yeah. It's like, you know how it is when you meet those certain people and the sexual chemistry is through the roof and you're like, I know this isn't the right thing, but like, damn, when he walks up, even though his strip tease is mid as hell, there's something about the way he smells. Well, we're still I animals. Can't. Yeah. When you like, when someone like gets your like, you know, yeah. basically gets you horny. Yeah. It's really hard to think straight. I know. So I sympathize with that. You know and what I mean? Sam it's like, if you're like, you're trying to, I'm trying to be like practical here, but like every time I get near the guy, I want to jump his bones. Like that's a tough thing to turn down it's tough but then we have sam m's worst enemy Mm -hmm. devin Mm -hmm. now okay devin before he gets up on stage and then obviously after in conversation with jen in the night portion he is talking about how he has a lot of insecurities um, regarding his body yes now i want to say this when i say this i'm not trying to take away from the fact that i think that Devin was being extremely vulnerable and I so appreciate his vulnerability and also not trying to take away from his experience because I do feel like it was relatable. What was hard for me to watch during this was the fact that it is relatable and it just enrages me because of the, the fucking culture that we're in, that the fact that there's just the conversation about not all bodies being beautiful and worth and valuable and lovable and just like this fat phobic culture that we're in, everybody go follow roses for everybody if you don't. They push this and talk about this when it comes to this specific franchise because this narrative always continues in this show yeah. where it's just like if you don't have this exact body that it's not loved, it's not worthy or valuable or worth being loved. And if you get to another point, then you have a glow up. Da, right, da, da, da. Right. When I'm saying this, I like I said, I'm not trying to take away from Devin's experience because I do think it was amazing that he is a vulnerable enough of a of a man to have this conversation and uh but i do feel like it's like it just makes me so upset that this conversation is even happening so gotta talk body neutrality talk about loving all bodies and all forms but anyway um devin yeah is uncomfortable right going into this sure devin comes out he calls himself Dirty Detective, which he definitely looked like a flasher from like the yes, 60s. He did, like, <laughs> like, he's you know, he's the guy in the park that just goes like this to people. Yeah, yeah, he really and did. He's going to have like watches all yes, down. His yeah, coat. he'll sell you watches and flash you at the same time at the park of New York in 1962. Or something he's like, like what do you think about this? Yeah, like, like, that, is, yeah. that was what he looked like. 100%. But he came out. He ripped that jacket off and he's wearing a full thong. I think he was the only guy. Who had a full thong on and he came up leg up it was a little too close for comfort for me if i was oh, it Jen. was all <laughs> i mean i will say the guy he's done like i don't know what it is but it's like his he ha- his mindset is clearly if something scares him or is in- making him insecure he goes twice as hard almost it's almost like if you're afraid of heights stand on the edge of a scary building yeah. and just look down that's what he does with his like insecurity and fear but he had that leg up and then his, his wearing a g-string shaking his ass the aussie bachelorette slapping the ass they're living for it and he shimmies down all the way down the runway doesn't even put his robe on for a while and it was like he knocked it out of the park and he said they remember they said they're like he has big dick energy yeah they're like he's so yeah he's so like it was confident and sexy it was confident. you know why because it was fun yes. it was playful and it showed confidence mm-hmm. even though he was you know feeling the way he was feeling he came out and he just was exuding confidence yes. and it was like you know to me so jonathan ends up winning the award which yes. i do think he crushed it yeah he was the best overall but i wanted to give it to Devin because I, I was like he he 
it was the most fun. It yes. was exciting. It was fun. Everyone was into it. Everyone laughed. I completely you agree. know. So Devin. But I feel like I do feel like he's kind of killing it all around it. I felt like it almost was one of those things where like we can't also give it to Dylan again. I don't know. Devin. Uh, <laughs> sorry. But you know what I'm saying? I do feel like there was a little bit of like almost producers were like, you know what? Let's share the love a little bit. It's all about Sam and it's, it's all about Sam M and Devin. Like, let's kind of spread the love. Let's give Spencer the date. Let's like, I felt like it was starting to get a little small so like they had because to... let's be real and we'll get into it after we take this last pause mm -hmm. but Devin is so good at this show he's a master at this show like like him or well, not we haven't seen like him or not okay I still I love watching Devin on mm -hmm. my screen now when it comes to the perfect choice for Jen or would I be like, Hey, this is the guy for my friend. Beside the point. I'm not necessarily feeling that way. I still don't know how I quite feel about him. I think there's a lot of immaturity that yes. we're seeing, but there's a lot of moments where it's like, yes, when he's standing up for Sam yes. and which we'll get into just the lines that he has back with the guys, the fact that he has not gone and talked shit about yes. the men to Jen, even though they're coming for him left, right and center. And even with the other guys, he's not walking over and like going, you know, Hey, can you believe how stupid Sam M is? You know, he's not yeah. even doing that. He's keeping no. it to himself. So it's like, he's, he's playing it perfectly, like actually <laughs> crazy. And so it's really aggravating some of the other guys, but it's also like, you know, when you're playing a great game, it's hard. He's you're hating playing him. a perfect game of getting to know her, yes. being charming, having wild, outrageous moves with like the ice cream gate, Stealing having the attention. confrontation, but then also in the ITMs being only focused on it being about Jen and making sure in his conversation when it's just, that it's just about him and Jen 100%. and about her. I'm like, this man might be one of the best players we've seen. It's and I don't know. It's unbelievable. It, it, it's pretty incredible. Electric on the, on the screen, electric, you know, I don't know. He's killing it. He's crushing, crushing it. it. Like this is the guy who I think if Jen doesn't ultimately pick him, mm -hmm. which I feel like she really likes him. He's going to be a he top. Definitely he definitely probably runner. will have a hometown. It'll uh, just depending on how we'll see that how goes, far but. that goes. But if he, if she doesn't pick him and he ends up, you know, I, he's going to, he will be electric on the beach. He'll be the king of paradise, paradise king all day. And I think a lot of women, will really like yes. him a lot because a he charmer. is a dynamic person mm -hmm. and he is charming without it feeling like he's fuck trying to be a player. Oh, he's yes. zero fuck boy energy. Mm -mm, he doesn't give me fuck boy. Mm -mm. It's amazing. Anywho. It's a sight to be held. Anywho. Okay, we'll get into the night portion mm -hmm. of this where the drama really started popping yes. off. Um, but one more quick pause. So, family, uh, cut to me immediately after watching this episode downloading three three pet portrait apps because I was thinking about Spencer <laughs> and I wanted to turn my yes. dogs into 1800s royalty. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then realizing right after that, I do not need to be paying monthly for three <laughs> of these pet right. portrait apps. Okay. And wanting to cancel them right afterwards. Uh, it was quite a whirlwind in my home. Anyway, thankfully I have my heroes who find and cancel all those subscriptions for me and help me save money. You know, I'm talking about rocket money oh yeah we are thankful for rocket money in this house yes we are <laughs> rocket money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings with rocket money i have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses too i see all my subscriptions in one place and if i see something i do not want rocket money can help me cancel it with just a few taps and let's be real we all have that over 74 percent of people have subscriptions they've forgotten about i obviously definitely have myself so rocket money to the rescue and also get this rocket money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20 percent all you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and rocket money takes care of the rest they'll deal with the customer service for you this feature to me it's everything mm -hmm. i love it so much it's incredible rocket money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of five hundred million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to seven hundred and forty dollars a year when using all of the app's features. They've saved me so much time and money over the years. It's just one of those things. If you don't have rocket money, 
It's like, why not? Mm -hmm. Genuinely, why not? You got to get it. It's a no brainer. It's a game changer. We love Rocket Money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. That's rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. Rocketmoney.com slash mom dad. So then the night portion of this group date begins and, you know, Sam M is absolutely fuming over Devin and also fuming over now Sam N and his declaration of falling in love. We started out by Devin asking all the men, how'd you like my ass? <laughs> Which was just a power move. How'd you like my ass? It's such a crazy thing. And one thing I forgot to, to mention during the dancing stripping portion was that when Devin was doing his thing, yeah, Sam M leans over to someone and just goes, fuck this guy. Oh, yeah. It's like, what did he do? He's not doing anything. He's literally just dancing like you were dancing. Except he's doing a better job because he's doing it in a fun, but exciting he didn't do, way. he didn't say anything like Sam no. M could never. Like, he's doing nothing to target you in any way. And then you're looking around going, fuck this guy. It's like, dude, could you be more obvious? It's so crazy. Volatile. It's just, he's obsessed. He's obsessed. He's obsessed. And at first, like I said, when I had said before that Sam M is the mastermind, it's like, and I said, I can guarantee in that van ride home from last week's episode that Sam M was the one aggravating the men and boosting them to get upset yes. with the whole Devin situation. I, I'll stand by that yes. because I think now 100%. we're seeing on camera that Sam M isn't so calm, cool, collected anymore. He's obsessed and infuriated constantly. Um, but Jen starts sitting down with some of the men. By the way, she sits down with Jonathan. I I, I do really like Jonathan a lot. I like mm -hmm. his energy. Me too. Um, I liked that he in his ITM was saying that like a lot of the guys were annoyed with Sam N because it was a bold move. Right. But he's like, that's his bold move. Like. That's his. I I'm not, I, he, he said, I'm not here to judge whatever bold move he's going to have. I just hate have. this. Like, we're brothers. I know, but also you need like, to respect and we need to agree on the approaches. And you're not allowed to do anything unless it's approved by the group. And it's like, what are you talking about? Okay, well, and don't even then get me started when we're going to talk about Aaron and what went down with him. And he yeah. was Mr. Rule Guy. And then all of a sudden someone. <sighs> king of rules. You know making up his own rules. Exactly. So interesting. Um, but then Sam N sits down with Jen and you know what? Uh, I just, I really felt for Sam N in this episode. I, because the whole thing that went down and when he was uncomfortable and then it was the cringy decision when he sat down with her, he, I felt like it showed that he was pretty self-aware. He immediately apologized for her for the way in which he said it and yeah. went about it. The fact then that he went to the guys and was like, hey guys, I just want to apologize. He didn't need to do any of that. Mm -hmm. And he's very clearly self-aware enough to be like, hey, I know that this was awkward and so I want to like clear it up. And he said to Jen like, you know, I am, what I should have said is I'm really enjoying getting to know you and I'm feeling like I could see myself falling for you. But I just kind of, it just kind of came out. Yes. And I felt like that was solid of him mm -hmm. to say. I felt like Jen was so gracious the way she handled it. And ITM, she was like, it was a lot. Yep. But I also get that he was nervous and it kind of just came tumbling out. Yes. And he hasn't been in love before. And there's a lot of feelings going on. And he even said to Jen, he was like, I don't even like know how to hold your hand. He's like, I'm like, is it too tight? And it made me think. I know that our guesstimations about Sam N before is that he's just like a wild player. I think maybe we were just deceived by the fact that he's like extremely attractive. Mm -hmm. I think maybe he hasn't had a lot of experience and he's it's such a, a like, little just like he's nervous and doesn't quite know how to be. It's funny. You know, there's always a big deal made about virginity. Yeah. You know, there's always like, I'm a virgin. And we're like, right, oh my God, there's right. always, there's, a, there's always a virgin per, per mm -hmm, season. Mm -hmm. There's always the virgin. Mm hmm. But people could be virgins for a lot of reasons, right? Like people could absolutely be like, okay, I'm religious. I don't want to have sex before yeah. marriage. But I've been in love multiple times. I've had many girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever. Never having been in love mm -hmm. and kind of having what clearly seems like very little experience in relationships mm -hmm. is a new one. Mm -hmm. Also wild to come on a show where you're competing against other men yeah. for the love and attraction of another woman if you have no experience with just even one-on-one -on -one dating when there's yeah. no competition yeah so i do feel like he's just out of his depth like yeah. he's just like dude i don't even know what i'm doing with a woman 
at a bar right. chatting, let right. alone I have 20 seconds with her and I got to impress her in 20 yeah, seconds. I've got, like, I've got 15 cameras in my face and they're encouraging me to do certain like this things. Show, and these guys are, you know, this show is designed for people who are good at this. Like serial daters. Like good at yeah. dating, good at impressing someone with a quick comment, good at stealing someone and, you know, getting their attention, like good at this. And then they're competing. But you're kind of throwing in like a guy who's like played a little bit of soccer into like a professional soccer game. And it's just like, oh, I don't even know how to hit the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just kind of like watching someone slowly drown in quicksand a little bit is the energy. Because then he's like going backwards. I don't know how to hold your hand. Oh, sorry for telling you I loved it. Yeah. I, I didn't mean it. I, I, I don't like I don't mean it. I just, yeah. you know, it's just right. It's just you could just see he's he's. I just feel like I, I, I guess I read him wrong at first yeah. and I do think that yeah he, he maybe just doesn't have really a lot of experience and he's nervous because when and you see so, people that attractive you like I, you, you, you assume, assume that yeah. they're like and I think I made the assumption yeah. but then even when I go back to last episode where he was like standing in the back during the group date and he's like I don't know how to, like, know how to okay be, yeah. you know what maybe he just he just doesn't have a lot of experience and this is like so intense to jump into like you said this type of show yeah. with no experience with no in experience that world wild. you know like I definitely wouldn't have enough experience to go on this show I dated, I dated you and a couple people. I would flounder in this show. I'm like, I don't have enough dating experience to know how to be. I think you'd be really good in this show if you didn't like the lead. Sure. But because if I like the lead, be I'd like, be screwed. Because you'd be like, oh, I'm just going to have fun with this. I would just throw it But if you actually like someone, that's when I feel like it'd be oh, tough. Oh, no. If I like somebody, I would flop. Right. Same. I'd be so nervous. I wouldn't know what to do. Exactly. I'd have a Sam end moment. I'd freeze up. I'd make mistakes. I love mistakes. you. Yeah. <laughs> Like, Which one are you again? Are you Sa Sam or what's your name? Oh yeah, Sam. Well, he then after she's so gracious with him, he then comes out and he's like, "Guys, sorry, sorry, sorry." Well, listen, Devin at this point, hero Devin energy has overheard Sam M and Thomas N just giggling in the corner, making fun essentially of Sam N. Devin has just come off of having a one-on-one -on -one sit down with Jen where he talked about his insecurities. So Devin's big thing through this, these past couple episodes has been being who you are and me staying true to myself, even if people don't like it, and then being really vulnerable and talking about things that he's insecure about. So that's the emotions that are pulsating through his body. This man hears them giggle. He grabs his vodka crayon. And he's like, I'm going to tell everybody in this building to shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I'm going to protect my brother, Sam N. Mm -hmm. And you all are going to shut the fuck up. He rolls in there. The second Sam N is like, hey, guys, so sorry for saying what I said. And Devin's like, no, 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 no. Never apologize for being who you are. Devin is like in his self-realized era. And he's like, do not apologize for what you said and did. You are being true to yourself. Do yeah. not let these men. And that is where the combustion begins. Yes. And he then calls out Sam M and Thomas. And he's like, you guys are just laughing. You guys are talking about mutual respect. Whispering. But yet you're in the corner whispering constantly. Like, what is he doing to bug you guys? Yeah. And it becomes explosive. Yeah, it starts going off. And, you know... I will say this is where it's interesting with Sam M because he does this weird thing where he'll talk shit, be ragingly mad, but then at the same time, like be like, I'm not letting you get to me and just sit there and be like, I can handle it. And then when he flies off, it's just a lot of like, he doesn't really have any thing to say other than I don't like you. I'll never respect you. I think you're an idiot. And that's it. Like there's no, cause I think when you really think about it, there's nothing wrong Devin has done. It's just a, I don't like your personality. It rubs me the wrong way type energy. Yeah. So I think like. But again, it, the pulsating insecurity of I've never had to fight for a woman before. Exactly. And I think there's this kind of thing where he he knows he can't say anything because there's nothing to say. You didn't, It's not like when you said that thing, that was a problem. It's always like, I just don't like you. I'll never respect you. It's like respect. What's this respect thing about? Like, it's just really childish. And. Then you got Thomas there, who's like basically just going, yeah, what he said, you know. I'm so bummed out about Thomas, by the he, way. He I got really, sucked into this I big really, brother complex really, really thing loved with. Thomas, and Sam M is just, you know what Sam M is? He's a bad influence. <laughs> and Thomas, I hate to say this, but the fact that you're getting influenced at all week two of hanging out with these people I'm is like, very embarrassing. Sam M, it's like it's like what I like how I teach my daughter when she comes home from school, and I can t I can tell who she's been hanging out with by maybe certain energies, and when the energies are maybe you know negative towards other people, it's like maybe there's a bad influence in your group, and you know what Sam M is the bad influence. Thomas is the type of guy that like goes over to a new friend's house. 
the new friend is super disrespectful to his parents mm -hmm. and goes like, fuck you, mom. And then the mom's like, don't say that to me. And he's like, get me a sandwich. And then she gets him a sandwich and she goes, see what I'm saying, dude? My mom does whatever the hell I want. <laughs> and then Thomas goes, yeah. And then goes, someone goes, fuck you, mom. And then he's around for six weeks. He's like, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Like he, he's just like, he wants to be someone he's not. You know what I mean? And so yeah. Sam M kind of makes him feel like, yeah, we're tough guys, right? It's like, Thomas, you seem like such a lovely guy. Like, get away from Sam M, okay? Get now, away from him. I do want to make a comment about Devin, though. And yes. and this is the thing about him where it's like yep. he keeps shooting himself in the yep. foot, which is like he's very good with his words. He's a very charming guy. He usually has a great argument, all those things. But he does the thing that like... When I, I feel like this is a classic thing that happens when people are good with words and they're good at arguing. They want to bury you. Yes. Does that make sense? Like, yes. him, he, like, and then again, it's a little bit like, okay, Devin, you need to chill a little bit. Like, even when Sam N was apologizing, the words were barely out of his mouth. And then he's like, you don't need to apologize. It's See, kinda I like, loved that. I loved it, but it was a I little like, that. he kind of made it about him a little bit by being like, I'm making a point to these guys. And it just felt a little bit like, okay, let him finish. It was a little bit, let him finish. And then be like, hey man, you don't have to apologize to anyone. I think you're a good guy, but, uh, but he, hey, you listen to me right now. You never have to apologize. And then like, you know, when he, he was fighting with Sam M, he would throw in the last word and go mutual respect like a jab right at the end. Well, it's like Thomas said, he's like, you always have to ha have the last word, which I do think Devin does. And then when he got the rose, he, oh, you know what I'm saying? He looks at everyone. Laugh. He looks at everyone and just goes, you know what? And this just shows the type of guy that she's into. Again, it's like he does these things where it's like up to about 70, 80 percent. He's an amazing perfect perfect player in this game and then he always just goes a little too far but and it's I like dude if you don't want everyone to be like if you want to be loved you chill on but that I, but i think that that's i think that does make him the perfect player because no, no no it he, makes him amazing he, to he watch pushes it where then the drama starts but when it comes to maturity i do think that that's you know when he's a young guy there's a, there's plenty of time yes. to, to learn that and again, I've been so impressed at the fact that he hasn't been going and talking shit about the guys to Jen. Yeah. Um, and that he's honestly been transparent in front of all of them, yes. you know, that he's calling them out and not doing it behind their back. And then also to the moments like with Aaron, when Aaron's giving him the book and he's just like, hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Like, I completely he's, there agree. There are so many moments where he's handling it like a champ. But then, like you said, I fully agree. When someone's really good with their words and good at arguing, sometimes they want to bury you. And you're so right where it's like, hey, you got to just let it go. You don't have to do the final last word to cover the dirt and have it be the final but it's burying hard when moment. it's easy for you. Yes. Like, and, it's easy for him. And for Devin, it's like he looks at Sam M and he's like, you think you're a worthy opponent for me? It's like boxing with someone who's never boxed before almost energy. Like, he's kind of going, you want to step in the like verbal Sam ring could here? Never. I will mess you up. I'm like, Sam up. says like <clears throat> three things yeah. over and over again. Again. And like straight up, I need captions because the way that he like, oh, he, he does like, like the, yeah, baby, the baby know, girl. I'm girl. like, what did he say? <laughs> like, but but Devin, he that's where the immaturity is. Where like you said, so so uh, Jen does end up, end up giving Devin the rose, mm -hmm. which you and I literally started cheering. We were so excited because it was we were just like, you, yes, have nothing yes. worse than just Sam M's brain being like because it came off of Sam M and his one on one with Jen yes this whole Sam M with Jen situation where he immediately is like you like my name is Chef Luster just dive bombs into a literally, kiss literally like doesn't even let her talk just no. immediately, immediately takes advantage of the like we have sexual chemistry energy just goes in and she pulls back and she's like you haven't even asked me to be your girlfriend and then he goes you drive me crazy again she's like is that a lie no, no. she's starting to oh, like yeah, she's like yeah, she's starting on this movie? like wait a second i'm starting she's, to kinda... she's picking up on it yeah but then when she's like you haven't even asked me to be your girlfriend and he gets up and starts grinding on her like like stripping on her essentially and she's like no are you kidding me and then he very aggressively, I'm sorry, that like really bothered me the way that he was like grabbing at her. And she was like, no, I'm trying to, she was trying to talk to him. And he just was like, he was like yucking me no, out no, that, hardcore during that. You it, and I were both like, this is not okay. The way I, that he was yeah. just dive bombing. It was like. And then later when he has another time with yes. her, he does the same thing. Same thing. She's like, so I just wanted to, and he's like, oh, oh, and it's like, okay, what's, what's happening, what we're clearly finding is that. He goes, I am going to use that as my thing now. Yeah. And I. Well, he has nothing to say. And he has got nothing up top. And I do feel. Nothing to say. I do feel like 
he the second time they had time together when he went in for the kiss she started to doing the like hugs over the kiss so he would go into her face and then she'd turn and hug him. yeah and it's interesting i'm starting to feel like a lot of his rage also is coming from the fact that he feels like she's catching on his game isn't quite working how many times are you just going to make out passionately yeah. at some point you're going to start losing ground to the guys that she's connecting with emotionally mm -hmm. and i feel like this was the episode where we we're, we're right in the middle and it's starting to teeter we're seeing a off shift the like wait is this the only thing we have is a little bit of sexual chemistry he won't speak to her like I'm, i almost feel like it's starting to feel like she's going wait maybe in real life we'd hook up once and then never talk again yeah almost energy yeah 100 percent no, and he he has nothing to say. And he, I think he literally has nothing to say. He has he has one line that he got from a movie, and then he dive bombs into kissing her passionately. And when she tries to talk to him, he just smothers her. It's very upsetting to me. Anyway, yes. so after that, mm -hmm. when she then gives Devin the group date oh rose, I, we were literally cheering because we we're like, suck it, Sam yeah. M. <laughs> like, we we like, feel yes, about yes. Sam M as he feels about Devin at this point. Yes, like, no, I was like, everything he does bothers me. Yeah. We were just like, get Sam M. So that was in the moment though when she leaves that like you said Devin does the whole you know like Thomas N said it's, earlier it's like uh, clearly uh, she knows what she wants in a man and that might be me it's like light it's like lighter fluid and he's but then Sam M when he's like you know what your humility is inspiring to yeah. me and I should learn he starts laughing maniacally oh god it's it shivers down my spine yeah he hated it that was so the much. only time where I felt like that was a good little comment from Sam M because he goes because it was oh, so mean, over the top braggadocious in their face like guys it's just really nice to see that yeah, sure. she's really figuring it out and I was like that would annoy anyone but like, him that starting would, to laugh I was like oh, oh he's, yeah. lo he's, he's losing, losing it he's it. gonna snap he's, he's gonna, gonna snap. snap he's so close um, well then we go back after this group date we go back to the hotel and we see that Aaron the other anti Devonite uh, gets a call Yes. And there is a, it's a call, I guess, you know, he, it says he's an aerospace engineer, but he's, I guess, been wanting to join the Air Force and do like fighter. I'm not quite sure yeah, what's happening. I don't know happening. if it's just flight lessons, it sounded like, almost like that he, they, in, I guess you can fly these fighter pilots if you're not in the military. No, I but don't I think know. he wants to join. Oh, I yeah, I don't really get it. I, I'm confused. But anyway, apparently he's been waiting for a year and a half for this call. And he gets a call and they're like, hey, you got a week to be here and you got 24 hours to give us yes. the answer of whether you're going to come and join or if you're going to stay there. And if mm -hmm. you stay in the ba this bachelorette happening. run, you're out. So then there's a group date. So yeah. he goes in knowing this. Yes. And this is my thing that I wanted. To, and I was lecturing you about this. Yeah. I have, I'm not saying that Aaron, when he finds out that this might be a potential opportunity for him, that he should say no to this or that he needs to immediately tell Jen. I'm not saying he necessarily has to do that, but I found it quite ironic that Aaron, who was going off, literally going off on Dylan, a.k.a. Devin, about pulling her for some time during a group date and said, you can't do that. It's a group date. It should be one on one time that this guy, of all people, finds out that he's going to decide in 24 hours whether he's going to leave or not and has the audacity to do a date with Jen, make out with her and not tell her what's going yes. on. Like, I don't necessarily have a huge problem with that, but Mr. Rulebook yeah, guy, yeah, exactly. who thinks that, De Mr. Gar that Heart Devin, Guardian. the heart guardian who thinks that Devin's the devil yeah, and is like this horrible person who's there for the wrong reasons, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you now are going to be okay making out with Jen? Of course. Of course. Going on a date, hoping you're going to get the group date rose and thinking, yeah, I'm probably going to leave. Come on now. Yeah, he's Get definitely just seeing if there's anything left. And then, you know, I, I don't know. It's very, it's very Get out of knight here. in shining armor, but for the wrong reasons, energy. Everyone needs to follow the rules that we set in place. And if you don't, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like I don't feel like I can make it on my own. So I have to slow everyone else down to make us feel like we all have a fighting chance kind of thing. Know. It's, it's weird, some weird rule followers. It's just shit. some weird masculine bonding together of like, these are our rules. And if you break them, you are like, it's just, yeah, douche. it's very I don't embarrassing, like it. but they end up having another group date. This group date is only with four mm -hmm. people, which was wild. I would have wild. been so jelly. I'm like a four person group date. Um, so it's Jeremy, Austin, 
Aaron and Hakeem mm-hmm. and it's a racetrack. Yeah. Jen, badass, zips up in some like Formula One yeah. type of car, takes off the helmet full hairography right, with right. the hair. Yeah. Stunning, gorgeous. Should be Slow in a music mo. video. And she's ripping in that car. I don't ripping. think she's driving. She's not driving. She was driving. No, no, she gets out and there's a driver in the car. I don't think so. Are you sure? I think she was driving. Oh, wow. That would have been crazy. I think she's a... She's she a she even driver. said, she's like, I'm a damn good driver. Damn. Okay. I I'm didn't catch saying, that. All I right, think she's right. ripping. Damn. And then the hairography on top yeah, the of it. Yeah, the of course, slow um, But they end up, you know, finding out that they're going to do a lap. They're going to get time. The person who has, who does it the quickest gets extra time with yes. Jen. Um, Aaron's the only one who knows how to drive a stick shift. And what was the other thing? I don't know. Some sort of gear or something or other. Yeah. Oh, no, like a uh, right-hand driver. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, because it, it's in Australia. So it yes. was like the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's the only one. Mm-hmm. So he, there's competition flowing through his bones. So we see. Like, th- obviously, I'm going to crush this. He's like, I'm going to destroy this. All the guys are like, oh, he's going to crush. Hakeem was killing me. Hakeem 100% was me in a car. I'm he's screaming so the entire time. Hilarious. I would have never done this date. Yeah. You're telling me I have to rip around a track? Stick I'd be shift like, too. I'd be like, no. Like, this yeah. is, again, so dangerous. He's stalling the car out. Like, it's hilarious. Evan, it's so dangerous. He's also just like such a. Like he's a character, like his reactions, how like the, the, I mean, he's given up so much just like fun, loving, lighthearted joy in the show. That's for sure. The fact that he is gone is so devastating to me. And also I'm sure it's devastating to the guys because I think we saw like Austin crying because you know, when that one person brings a good energy to a hang and then they leave and you're like, like, oh "Oh, no, no." now it's just, yeah. Now it's just a bummer fest. Big time. Um, but he was me. That would have been me. Mm -hmm. Um, also so brave of Jen to be in the car with these men who don't know how to drive Crazy. and they're just ripping around a track. I don't know how they didn't smash into a wall. Again, I'd be like, no, absolutely not. What yeah. are you trying to do to me? Jeremy does pulls a great move. Yeah. He's ripping. In fact, Jen says, you're going the fastest and he stops, makes out with her. I mean, that was And gets clutch. losing time, gets the, the you know, the he, longest time, matter. but he's like, but I won. Because he knew, because he knew, because he's like, finally, someone knows, like, it's not about actually winning the game. No one cares that you got the fastest lap. He figured it out. You know, he knows that like if I make out with her in this car and make it a fun moment, that is what she's going to remember about. Not how fast of a car I drive. Like no one cares. Did you notice he had the Australian vest on? Did he really? He had the vest on again. His Aussie vest. I'm oh. telling you, that's a wardrobe stylist who's like, this is very Australian yes. coded. Yes. And he wore it again. He's like, I feel like I'll have success in this. Yeah. yeah. I kind of was starting to like Jeremy. Yes. Shocking. Like not, not shocking because I didn't like him, but he was kind of a nothing guy. He, it's shocking to me because his intro about having a big dick. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. I yeah. Was yeah, like, yeah. Ugh. He kind of sucked in the vibes there and the whole car. And he was giving kind of like greasy, like real estate guy. Yeah. But these last couple moments were like, okay, maybe there's a side to him that I'm we like, like, okay, he's, he's, he's cute. Mm-hmm. He's, I kind of like that. He's a little mysterious. Mm-hmm. He, I like his energy. He's very calm. And looking back, I did say, I did like that he didn't react to Brian in the first episode when Brian was like, this is my car now. Exactly. And he he wasn't reactive. Nope. nope. It's good. So I was like, all right, I've got my eye on Jeremy. (sighs) Um, But Austin does the laps as well. And he he seems like a cute, sweet guy too. He seems like a great guy, but like, but maybe not electric enough for them to kind of like put him on screen she gave him first rose last rose ceremony yeah so there there must be something there i'm wondering if he's our sleeper maybe a sleeper maybe they're saving his his uh, narrative or you know yeah. thing for a little later i'm wondering if all of a sudden he'll like become this front runner because maybe. everyone seems to like him super good looking dude Think seems about super this. nice last episode the guys were like austin was supposed to go first yeah and then this episode spencer was like austin g- didn't get to talk to her so he's loved in the house. Yeah, it's interesting. And he was crying when Hakeem left. Mm-hmm. He seems like he's not getting involved in any of the drama. That's probably why he's not getting a lot of screen time. Yeah. Yeah, he's a cute guy Because did they even show his one-on-one? No. Okay, so let's get to this. So Austin does the yeah. laps around the track. Then they get to Aaron. And Aaron's like, this is my moment. This is my moment. And by the way it looked, it was like, oh, Aaron won this. And then we find out the times. And they say that Austin beat Aaron. My theory, he did not. I am convinced that Aaron had the best time and they said Austin had the best to get to Aaron. Mm. I think they're trying to crush Aaron. <laughs> See, I think he lost and that's what made him leave. 
he thought <laughs> she'll never look at me the same way you know what i mean he's he's that like basic that he's just like i can't i gotta well, leave. he was like my pride was really mm-hmm. hurt like he didn't care about the time with jen he just wanted to win he just wanted to win the thing because it reminded him of the fighter jet he's trying to get but on. that's what i'm saying is i think that he actually did win and then they because the way it looked there's no way it definitely looked like he was he crushing. Won. Come yeah. on. Yeah. And yeah, they I never thought said about that. that. And because also to the time was like two seconds. Ten, yeah, it was like a few seconds different. Dude, it's like, get out I of here. I think Austin lost and they gave it to Austin to bug the shit out of him. Yes, just that's to my drive theory. Him crazy. Because you saw his face. He was like, like, what? And that's one more reason why he's going to leave. Because mm-hmm. they knew. They're like, well, he's boring. We'll get him yes, out. You yes. know, he did a little bit of his drama. He was a puppet for us. He gave gave her the fake book. Yes. Or gave Devin, excuse me, the fake book. The fake book. It, I saw people's comments um, saying, we looked it up too. No one can find that book. Completely fake. Wow. It's crazy. Fake book. Crazy. Fake book. It's a fake book, which means he didn't read it. So which he means lied. the whole bit was literally like... I don't think we've ever seen something so obviously fake where it's like he handed him a book that said he's read it multiple times and he's straight up. It doesn't exist. It's a not a real book unless he wrote it and he just changed the name on it. <laughs> that is another option. Dr. Aaron. He just hasn't put the book out yet. <laughs> it's his like alias. That's uh-huh. his pen name. Mm-hmm. Doctor, whatever it was. <laughs> exactly. You know what? It's a pen name. You can make it doctor. That is you know, nobody funny knows that everyone figured out. Um, But I think that they're doing it to fuck with Aaron. Yeah. But then they give Austin. Austin gets, he won. So he gets special time with Jen. They don't show us the time. They don't show us the time. So we literally, I'm like, why Why won't you show us Austin? Yeah. So maybe they are trying to like make him a surprise. Yeah, maybe they're trying to kind of save him. Yeah. Kind of like, let's let this Devin, Sam M thing kind of fizzle or figure it out. And, and then, then Austin kind of bring, can kind of rise mm-hmm. to the top cream to the top kind of like grant grant didn't get any any time this this episode too so maybe they're kind of on the guys that are chill and mature they're kind of like letting them letting them not take because there's nothing there so they're going let's just these guys are obviously going to do well but let's just see how much we can heat up this mess here very interesting yeah good point well they end up having they have a little bit of one-on-one time which we don't see and then they have the night portion um you know aaron basically is just like i'm a super exciting thrill-seeking guy and she's like wait what really you're excited oh you you have a pulse i had oh okay i didn't see didn't know that the pearls are back the pearls are back he loves his his personality now yep his personality is in the pearls pearl personality Mm -hmm. um but she has uh we barely see her time really with the other guys but what we do see is that she is opening up Mm -hmm. she's talking a lot about like relationship mistakes that she feels like she's made toxic past relationships mm-hmm. and i feel like for jen this is big because jen is a little more guarded yeah i was really relating to this i told you when we were watching it i was like it takes a lot for me to actually if i'm interested in someone to like put myself out there yes. in that way and i could tell that she really that was big for her because mm-hmm. she talked about it in the itms and she even talked about it the next day in the itms yes. going to the cocktail party she was like yesterday was big for mm-hmm. me and i feel really good because i really shared a lot about some past struggles for me. Yes. Um, so that was a big, so she's feeling good in this moment, yes. right? She ends up giving her group date rose to Jeremy. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. there, there's some chemistry popping off, yep. with, pop, popping off with them. Then we start the cocktail party. Yes. Okay, so Jen's feeling good at this moment. And then Aaron pulls her. Mm-hmm. And Aaron's like, listen, I didn't get the group date rose. And essentially the only way that I was going to say yes to this is if I got the group date rose and I won the race Mm -hmm. for my pride. Yes. I think he would have left anyway. Yes. Come on now. And he sits down with Jen and he explains to her, this is something I've always wanted. And if you and I were further along, maybe it would be different. She is so gracious and loving. She's like, I totally get it. She's clearly right there with him. Like, I, no, I don't, she you know, fully you're agrees. great, but like, I don't, we don't have anything special here. But I felt and like then this, she, is, this is like, she couldn't be more gracious about like following your dreams. It couldn't, she I, said couldn't too, have gone she was like, she was like, Hey, I don't want to be the source of resentment yep, for you, which yep. I felt like is a very wise, uh, piece. It's that's like, a, Hey, that's an experience right there. I was going to say, she knows she's felt that before. either she's resented someone for taking her dreams yeah. away or, you know, who knows in past yeah. relationship, they made a decision to not go for something. And then there's resentment. So yeah. that's a very real thing. No, that felt very real. Cause mm-hmm. I was like, that's a very like perceptive thing that I mm-hmm. feel like people recognize when they've experienced that before. Big time. Um, which a lot of people do experience, but that's like, it was a perceptive thing. It's like, okay, I don't want to be the source of resentment. Um, so she's like, you know, go on and be blessed. She sends him away, well wishes, love to you. And then he's like, 
by the way, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but there are people that are here for the wrong reasons. This man (sighs) is literally taking a red carpet that's rolled up and doing this to walk onto paradise. That is exactly Uh, what Aaron's doing. Interesting. This man is rolling out his red carpet. He's going, I'm going to do exactly what the producers want me to do. I'm going to say that this is my favorite book and give him a fake book. I'm going to come for Devin. Interesting. And you know what? So, you know what that probably is then? What? Brotherly advice. Being like, dude, you got to find that perfect balance I mean, between be yourself, but also play the game and they'll perhaps. love you for it. Yeah. I don't. Because if you have that kind of experience, like you have that type of inside scoop, there was no question he was sitting down with his brother a lot talking about, like, how do I do this thing? Well, of course, there's going to be inside scoop, but I also, I don't know if Noah necessarily did that, but if anything, Aaron saw how it works mm. and is like, well, Noah found the love of his life on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. And also had a kind of a redemption arc on the beach as well. And I'm going to go on the beach and maybe he's got, maybe he's got his eye on Sydney and he's yeah. like, there's a specific someone that I want to see on the beach and I'm going to do my pilot thing. And then I he, trust and believe this man will be on the beach. Okay. I don't care if he's, he's going to land the helicopter on the beach. You know what I mean? Straight it's up. Be... Even if he's in the middle of doing this thing, he's going to the sand. Yes, okay. 100%. And he, he did exactly what he needed to do to roll out that red carpet for the beach, which was say what he said and drop that bomb right before he left. Which was so cruel. She literally said, this is cruel. And she kept saying she was digging too. She right away says, is there any proof? Number one. And then number two, like, are you saying that the guys aren't ready or they're mm. here for the wrong reasons? Because that's what he said initially. There's some guys who aren't ready for marriage. Yes. She's like, are you saying they're not ready or they're here for the wrong reasons? Because that's a very different, yes. very different. He's like, well, a little bit of both. You'll have to figure it out on your own, he says at one point. He literally said to her. What like like it's a mystery. Like, <laughs> like, like he's selling her a house that's maybe haunted. It'd be like, you, you get, it's like you hand him the keys when you sell him the house and you go, by the way, there are spirits here. And then you go, what? And you're like, yes, hardcore haunted house, <laughs> FYI. And then you go, are they going to kill me in my sleep? That's for you to find out. It's like, what? They could be good. They could be bad. It could it's, be murderous. That's going to be for you they could to decide. decapitate you or love you. You'll never know. And that's for you to decide. They and I'll see you on the beach. You, they could bring you blessings and manifestations or they could kill you while you dream. So, so up to you. They can enjoy. haunt your family or... Make you feel love. alive again. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Jesus. What a psychotic thing to say on your way out, and then not to have the balls to be like call someone out. Like I'm not saying I would say have loved it. if. Like I think Devin was lucky. Yeah, that he didn't get called out. But I feel like he go. He hates Devin. He should have been like, Yo, I think Devin's a piece of shit. Just as FYI, like if you were gonna do the shitty move and like say something on your way out, which is a shitty move. Because um, because it's a whole like I just want to let you know I care about you. So here's some. It's like no, you don't. Shut up, dude. This isn't about, this is about you. Yes. Um, or it's about your boys getting her, which is kind of what it felt more like to me. Yes. It's like, if I'm going to, if I can't have her, if then my friend's got to have her. Then my man, my main man, Sam M. You don't that, care about her. That was her. the other thing too, Evan, the irony that he was like, there are guys that are here for the wrong reasons and essentially was like, here are my blessings to Sam M. Because when Sam M sat down with her, he's like, well, Aaron's my guy. So I'm sad. Such a weird by, thing. To be by like, the way, by the way, devious of sam m first thing he does when he sits down with jen is like by the way makes her feel kind of bad somehow or something bad, but it was just more like for him to convince her that's not him he's oh. like i'm really just she's like how are you he's like i'm just really bummed about aaron leaving because that's putting my guy. in her brain it can't be him clearly it can't be sam m. smart I mean, that's so smart Devious. Oh, smart. but no aaron being like i'm gonna give sam m my blessing yeah. and you're like you think that's the guy that's here for the right, right reasons right. my dude you should rescind your book and give yes, it elsewhere exactly, okay exactly so jen's upset under i'd be pissed yeah. and i love how she ended it with him she's like yep fine bye yeah he's like, she's get like just out of get out of here like you i was gracious it. and yep. now you're being this asshole who's just gonna be like dangling exactly. this potential thing in front of me so she comes in she looks at the guys and she goes if you have a if you're not in get out get out like get out she pulls Marcus. He's like, I'm nervous, but like, I'm here for you. She's checking in. She's like, are you good? Are you good? And she then she checks in with Sam. He mm. does his whole love my boy, Aaron. 
dives into a kiss, barely talks to her. She's like, are you not nervous? And he just keeps smooch, smooch, smooching. But then she says, she's like, I got a thing. I like Sam M. It's like, damn it. Mm -hmm. Um, What I did find interesting is I felt like the one guy that she did pull that she didn't question was Devin. She pulls Devin yes. and he's just talking to her about like, you know what? Yeah, you got to do like whatever you feel like you need to do, like to take care of yourself. And I so appreciate you standing by what you need and da, 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 da. And she's not doing anything, any questioning of, is it you? Are you here for the wrong reasons? And ironically, they're talking about Devin. But I think a, she can know, read that he's sincere. Yeah, I like, so I too. don't, again, as much, whatever you care and think about Devin, there's the immaturity, yes. There's sometimes these things that I don't vibe with. But as much as he is an unbelievable player, I do feel sincerity from mm-hmm. him. I think that often he gets caught up in the big dog thing where he wants to be the big dog on campus and then him and Sam M are having this big yes. dog off. Mm-hmm. But I do think he sincerely does like Jen, like I, I said agree. last week. I, I feel like I, we keep seeing that more and more, mm-hmm. that they do have a good connection. Yeah. Um, but, you know, then the whole thing. We yeah. have another explosive. You literally were pacing. You're like, I'm nervous watching. Well, because my whole thing was like, <laughs> The my explosion whole th- continues amongst the men. I was sweating watching them, but it to to be honest, the reason why I was sweating about the argument was because I was afraid that Thomas Sam M would go into her and start talking about him. You know what um, I mean? It was like, oh no, because once yeah. that happens and you have that seed of doubt in your head, it's almost impossible for Jen to like recover it almost feels like yeah, the to second, be like the second, well, the second Devin, everyone's like by the way you can't trust Devin it's like and it's like you know but also the second Devin sat down with Jen Evan was literally going don't say anything don't, don't say yeah, anything don't, don't say anything guy. don't say anything because <laughs> then it's on so it's like and he it's, didn't what I'm a, who I'm afraid of now is Thomas because Sam M and Devin have this kind of like who's the strongest we'll not talk about each other who's the this who's the that and I feel like Thomas is now the one that might sneak in and go like, by the way, you can't trust Devin. He's a bad guy. Like we're not paying attention to Thomas and Thomas might be the one. Thomas so that's, might that's be what's the one. Scary. Yeah, no, he definitely might be. But then it looks like there's drama with Sam N. Mm-hmm. So that might be distracting. I don't know. I don't know. We'll but see. But the guys are just all losing it. And Sam yeah. M's just like, you know, Devin brings up the fact that, that Aaron was trying to, to take down everybody on his way out. And yeah. Sam M's just like, you cannot say that about my brother and you should not question what the the motives that someone has and who they are. And he tried to flip, by the way, what Devin had said earlier about yeah. being yourself back on Devin with Aaron. He was just like, you cannot question someone being who they are and, and going about it, how they feel comfortable going about it. It's like, oh my God. <sighs> it was just so, so dramatic. And like I said, Spencer's just shouting like, make it stop. Yeah, he's like the giant in a movie, you know, when it's like he finds, like he's holding the whole time, he doesn't do anything. He's like, he's very calm. He's like, oh, I'm over. And then at the very end, he goes like, enough. And the ground <laughs> shakes and the, the rocks fall. You know what I mean? He's got that energy where it's like, it just takes a lot to get him. But once he goes, he's a big, scary giant. He's and like, no. Jesse Palmer then came out and was like, yeah, you guys, it's time to wrap it. Yeah. And he had a centimeter of champagne left which i don't feel like i've ever seen him like he oh jesse's drinking. in the background chugging Pounding, listening yeah. to these men fight and then they're not following that jesse's like it's rap time and spencer's like no he's saying that it's done yeah. you guys have ruined everything yeah, someone, now, it's not no over until it's die. over and he goes yes it is didn't you just hear him dad said <laughs> that was so funny um well then we had the rose ceremony obviously devin spencer and jeremy already had roses and uh, her first rose goes to Marcus. John M., which, by the way, we've barely seen John M. Yeah. at all. Every moment of John M., I've really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's another Austin character yeah. who we'll get to know a little more. Because There's so quite far, a few lying in wait. She's giving him high up roses, mm-hmm. John M., and every little blip that we have of him is no drama, solid guy. He did great during the stripping yep. thing. He was super charming mm-hmm. and cute, even though we had a quick moment with him. Um, But then there's Jonathan, Austin, another high up Austin. Mm -hmm. We barely saw Um, Grant, Sam M. I love how she always puts him a little bit Mm -hmm. lower. Thomas N, Dylan and Sam N. And leaving are Hakeem and Tomas, our magician who's not a magician from Cast Bios, which we literally heard him say one thing. One thing and he was gone. He made it far for someone who. How devastating to be like 
I'm spending all this money on clothing. I'm Time, I'm missing work. Everything. And then you get like beep. And you know that he probably did a hundred ITMs. Oh, and yeah. so you're like, oh, I'm gonna be in this show and a you ton. You don't even get you're all your friends are watching because you're having you watch exist. parties and you're like, there I am. You can see my back. It's honestly one of my biggest fears because like I'd love to do a reality TV show. But I'm so scared of putting all this emotional energy and time into it and like not getting any screen time. Brutal. But that's why people then fly off the handle sometimes yes. and become super dramatic because they know they're going to get They got to get some time. love. Anyways, Devin does the cheers again, mm -hmm. which is another. I was like, Devin. It's like, enough, dude. And you're really not helping like, you're yourself not here. If you're trying right to lower that blood pressure, you are not helping. I'm like, shouts out, you're crushing this, but like, stop with the cheers. That's when Sam N says, Sam M says in the real world that he'd snap Devin in half. <laughs> okay, big tough guy. Ooh. And then you'd go to jail. And then he would be in And prison. then you'd be arrested. So and I don't know so what that is. what's like, the purpose of... Are you saying like caveman in the, the caveman era? Like, what are you talking about? Stop. Um, well, then we see next week we've got, it's going to, next week's going to be high drama evan we have a De it looks like we have a devin one-on-one -on -one and a yeah. sam m one-on-one -on -one. Yes, yes, and that yes. they're having a full showdown the people are starting to freak out about sam n mm -hmm. and then we have whoever this new person is either showing back up or showing up for the first time yeah. either it's one of the guys coming back who is this i don't know who because it's like oh my god i mean it's like a big deal do you think maybe it's somebody like from a past season who wants to hop on like mm -mm. a blake moines what if it's blake <laughs> i don't think so i think it's someone she said it was like someone from her past so i did she yes i think so oh. so i think it's like an ex-boyfriend straight up that'll be nuts that's why i think it is because like why are you here and then she like runs away i mean it's like i think this is a straight up ex-boyfriend maybe someone who was her last ex if an ex-boyfriend joins the cast with this group of psychopaths, it's going to be so explosive. These guys are nuts. I don't think he will. I think she'll get rid of him. I think it's going to be like a touch and go. I think he'll come up. She'll be like, what are you talking about? You've already, you've already caused so much damage. We were, this is Our relationship was toxic. And then he'll If be he's gone. not a good guy, I hope he goes. But I also... Because we just... have not seen any reactions from the guys. Usually they show pictures of like... Or videos even, of this guy. Even if he's like not a great guy, like there is a part of me that like would oh, love to, to see join. him in there because I would love if he's not a good guy to get just get demolished by these men. I it's want like Sam feeding M. lions. Yes. It's like these guys are waiting for blood right 100%. now. They're just they're they're doing everything in their power to not attack, and then you put some brand new ex boyfriend into the mix, they'll lose their mind. The amount of you maybe, don't maybe Aaron the, failed his test, then he shows back up. Oh god, that would be so annoying. Actually, that might be what it is. Maybe. Maybe he came back. I made a mistake. Oh, God. I'd be like, get out of here, dude. But like, by the way, if if it is an ex and he joins the men, the amount of from the men to the ex, you don't know Jen like I do, will be insane, which is so funny. You already because, had your chance. You'll hear that a million times. But like, it, but you don't know Jen like we do mm -hmm. when you're like, this guy dated her for, you know, let's say a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And these guys who have known her for 36 hours are like, you don't know her like we do. <laughs> He'll be a lot of like, I made a mistake by breaking up with her to make it sound like, oh, you know, she the wanted drama. him. Well, I can't wait. Yes. This, this season, it's, it's so electric. So electric. Like, it's I, really good. I, it's so good. Like I'm really, really, really enjoying watching yes. it. And yes, it's so drama filled. It's a different type of season. Yeah. It's all it's about, just it's all about drama. the cast. It's just drama. It's, and I kind of, I it. kind of love it. They're, they're killing it. Um, well, family, uh, we love you. Obviously next week we'll be recapping the um, mm -hmm. episode next Wednesday, but tune in on Friday because on Friday we are having another call home extravaganza and we are talking about friendship dynamics. Yes. We're talking friendship breakups. We're talking new friends, awkward That's situations. Tough. It's a tough topic cheating with in relationships with a friend's cheating with your partner oh like all this stuff God. there's a lot of stuff yeah. so if you want to send in a voicemail um we're going to be recording this tomorrow yeah. if you're hearing this so get on it so get on it send a voicemail we'll have the link for the call home voicemail hotline in the episode notes uh so call leave a fresh friendship based question mm -hmm. Um, and we love you all. We love you. And we'll see you on Friday. See you on Friday. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.